barrier function of inflammation was understood initially in the terms of mechanics, in the sense of mechanical barriers. And it was done long ago, in previous century. But in the end of 20th century, pathophysiology came to conclusion that barrier of inflammation should be understood not only in the terms of mechanics, but also in the sense and terms of informatics. There are conclusive data uh, on the development of classical acute inflammation is in isolated, denervated organs, in chick embryo, chorion allantoic membrane, which is devoid of neural elements. You can observe, for example, placentitis, typical inflammation of placenta, but placenta is not innervated, neither from maternal nor from fetal side. So, I already talked about that, but I will re repeat. The nervous system is of some influence on inflammation, but of course not decisive and not principal. It may exert uh, a certain influence, especially in course of some inflammatory components, such as uh, vascular reaction. It provides also reception for the sense of pain and for the sense of itching, which may accompany inflammatory FOTSI. And this is important for the overall picture of inflammatory manifestation. But especially important is non-reflex, non-reflex paracrine activity of sensory neurons, because they are also endocrine cells. They are not only elements of relay in CNS. Sensory neurons are endocrinocytes and they are able to secrete uh, in impulseless mode via antidromal uh, pathway some peptides or autocoids uh, like neurokinins, for example, substance P and other neurokinins. And these neurokinins from sensory neurons innervating the FOTSI or areas of inflammation, they may influence the mechanisms of exudation. Moreover, sometimes the uh, sensory um, neuropeptide action of sensory neurons may even elicit information. It would be so-called neurogenic inflammation, but these neurogenic mechanisms are not reflectory. They are also humoral. Neuron works not as a source of neural impulse and neurotransmitter. Neuron in that case works as a source of uh, autocoid signal, like other cells of inflammatory focus. In other words, basically, the focus of inflammation is delimited in getting information from the neuroendocrine system. It is delimited with uh, edema, with uh, uh, slowing of blood flow, uh, with uh, functional sympatolysis, which was um, discussed in one of my previous lectures, and so on and so forth. Now I would like to give you a very bright example of how local and systemic mechanisms interact through the acute inflammation. Look at this picture, you can see an unhappy person um, who uh, probably was ironing his trousers and occasionally uh, he has got a burn with that uh, hot uh, iron, a burn of elbow area of his uh, left arm. So this burned person, he has in that burned area typical zone of acute inflammation with strong and bright dynamics of this process, with a huge amount of uh, inflammatory autocoids produced or activated. But at the same time, 
Because of that accident, this person has stress. And stress goes in parallel as a systemic response for uh, extraordinary stimulus. And because of stress, if you will measure the content of uh, glucocorticoids like cortisol uh, in systemic blood of that burned person, you can find it six times, eight times, ten times elevated. If you will measure the blood content of catecholamines in that person, it can be elevated 20 times, even 50 times. But listen, both glucocorticoids and catecholamines are potent anti-inflammatory regulators. Glucocorticoids may inhibit virtually all facets of acute inflammation. Catechola means, well, if you have rhinitis, if you have cold in your nose, you take drops uh, like ximelin, uh, naftizin, and so on and so forth, very many commercial names. But the acting ingredient is catecholamine, and by means of that catecholamine, dropping it into your inflamed nostril, you get inflammatory signs down. You decrease the intensity of hyperemia, of edema, and so on and so forth. How it is possible in one alive person at the same time, locally, you have huge inflammation, but systemically, you have huge concentration of anti-inflammatory mediators, and they do not prevent the full local dynamic of inflammation. They do not stop local reactions. It means that local zone and systemic zone of regulation are somehow separated. They are delineated informationally. Informational isolation of the burn focus by means of stasis, by means of venous congestion, edema, and other barrier functions. And these barriers, they establish non-sensitivity or decreased sensitivity of local targets to systemic anti-inflammatory signals. All that systemic signals can just to delineate inflammation, prevent its spread. But within that extraordinary damaged zone, there will be uh, extraordinary situation and spatial laws, spatial laws of war. The constitution of organism is created for peaceful situation. It acts for peace. But in that area, another matter of regulation acts. Extraordinary laws of emergency. They are dictated by local inflammatory mediators. And these inflammatory mediators, they overcome the anti-inflammatory systemic effects, but within the limited area only. That is very important. Uh, it means that the isolation in inflammatory barriers is bilateral. Not only organism is afraid to spread something, uh, out of the inflammatory focus into the whole organism. Body also prevents excessive systemic action on that zone of uh, extraordinary laws. Not only germs should be delimited from spreading by the barrier function of inflammation. For many years, pathologists traditionally taught their students that Listen, there are barriers, and the barriers prevent the spread of infection uh, beyond the borders of uh, inflammatory focus in order to prevent sepsis. And it is the truth. There are different barriers. Slowening of venous flow, uh, complete stasis in the center of inflammation in microcirculatory bed, Fibrin deposits, uh, leukocyte uh, shaft uh, 
the formation of granulomata in so-called delayed hypersensitivity, pyogenic membranes of abscesses, sequestration of a damaged area, for example, in osteomyelitis. All these are manifestations of physical barriers preventing from systemic spread of infection out of the focus of inflammation and uh, to the neighboring tissues. Um, I can remind that uh, it includes also function of regional lymph nodes, filtering and inactivating dangerous components of fluid drained by the lymphatic vessels from the inflamed area. So all that above mentioned mechanisms, they prevent the spread and generalization of infectious germs from the foci of inflammation. But what the body is afraid of in case of sterile, aseptic inflammation. Inflammation can be aseptic very often. For example, autoimmune inflammation can be aseptic. But nevertheless, non-infectious cases of inflammation, they also create barriers and barrier function is also realized. So what the body is afraid of when it surrounds with barriers foci of aseptic inflammation with no germs in them. Not only germs should be delimited from spreading. The most important thing is to delimit uh, inflammatory mediators from systemic spreading. They should act within inflammatory foci. But if they will act too actively in systemic circulation on non-damaged organs, they may cause severe systemic complications. First of all, excessive systemic action of inflammatory mediators may cause shock. Here you can see uh, the researchers uh, who first contributed into that idea of the bilateral character of inflammatory uh, mediators, uh, uh, inflammatory barriers. Not only uh, inflammation uh, does not let out, but it also does not let in. Some barriers prevent uh, zone of inflammation from excessive systemic control. Uh, the person whom do you see in uh, the uh, right picture is Polish pathologist of 19th century, Rudolf Klemensiewicz. Uh, as early as in 1893, he said, in the development of inflammation, neurogenic factor in the time of maximum disappears, giving way to the phenomena of the vessels themselves. In that period, local autocoids driving inflammation were not yet discovered. Much later, Soviet scientists Leonor Belli and Alexander Ginitsinsky discovered so-called functional sympatholysis. They have shown that in inflammation, uh, the blood vessels and smooth muscle cells within their wall uh, become non-sensitive to systemic vasoconstrictive neural signals because they are under prevailing influence of uh, antagonistic local vasodilatory mediators. So we may say that physical and informational barriers, they provide relative separation of the areas relevant predominantly to local control and predominantly to systemic regulation.